Hey friends, today we're going to go over Ableton Simpler. Intro and light users, everything I'm about to do, you can do as well. You'll have access to all the things I'm about to show you. And then also you, pro and veterans, using Ableton, you might learn all kinds of stuff with Simpler. Simpler is very powerful, and I use it all the time, still to this day. Uh, it's probably the most used device that I use in Ableton, and I'm really excited to go over this with you. So today's lesson is using Simpler as a synthesizer. So uh, what I want to show you um, is that any sound can be used as an oscillator, okay? So we're using Simpler as an oscillator in this case. So I'm going to record my voice. Synthesizer. So now I have synthesizer. So now that's my voice. <laughs> and I can take this waveform and I can drag it and drop it. Um, if you have the simpler window open and you click something and drag, you can drag it into simpler. So now what we have is this audio. The first thing you see, are these are playheads, okay? So I can move the beginning and ending playheads to around the area that I want to edit. So now my keyboard, if I drop audio into here, and it's it, it will automatically populate to classic mode, okay? And synthesizer, synthesizer, synthesizer. <laughs> I like that. Synthesizer. Okay, so um, now I have this Syn this waveform. What I want to show you is that if you you can zoom in and out, if you cycle waveforms, any wave fast enough, it enters this thing called audio rate. Okay, so I'm gonna just shrink the size of this audio till it's about this size. Syn Sin, sin, sin. So it's just sin. sin. Okay. If I decrease the length, so this is a this is a dynamic control that you can MIDI map and all kinds of other stuff. But if I just loop this audio, it'll it'll play like this. Sin, 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 right. Sin. If I decrease the length, listen. Sin, 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 sin. In fact, let's even move the start position. Pretty wacky, huh? Right. So that's fun. If I Keep decreasing the length. Check this out. Now I've got what I would consider some audio at audio rate. And if I make the, the, the size even smaller, you know, just keep decreasing this. What does that sound like to you? I have the single cycle waveform that's playing detectable pitches, right? You can hear those pitches. So if I have this wider, there's still a pitch there, but it's hard to hear, okay? So th that's just the concept that we're going to be uh, using moving forward. You don't need to totally understand what's going on, but if you cycle audio fast enough, it enters what's known as audio rate, okay? A detectable pitch is now, you're able to hear that. So I found this guy that created a hundred single cycle waveforms, and I'm going to show you how to import these into Ableton. You just go to, on your browser, you go down to places, and you see this button add folder, okay? If you click on that, I'm going to go quickly to the folder of those drum samples that I downloaded, okay? And if you click on the folder and hit open, what will happen is now in your places area at the bottom, there you go, you got the folder 100 void vertex single cycle waveforms. Okay, so these are all the different single cycle waveforms. Now, why are these why are these useful? Well, first of all, these are all tuned to C, so when you put them in the simpler, they should work just right off the bat. So now that I have this simpler open, I can drag and drop any of these awesome single cycle waveforms into here and try the different sounds out, right? So let's just pick a, you know, relatively thick, thick sound. Dirty saw. Okay, so this is the front panel. As it pertains to synthesis, here are some of the, the, the classic things that you do with a synthesizer. So first of all, you have a filter down here. You have two different poles. You got your different types. So, uh... You know, low pass, high pass. You have all these different uh, modes, so you can add drive and resonance, right? And then also you have volume envelope over here, right? Right. So there you go. That's you have a master volume right here, and you have an LFO. You might say, well, okay, well this isn't very, you know, this isn't very full of features. Well, if you click on the controls section. 
you'll notice that there's a lot more going on here, and there's a lot more under the hood. You have an envelope for the volume, but you also have an envelope for the filter, okay? And the way that you apply that is there's an amount thing here that goes uh, positive and negative. So now I can get... Um, I can get different sounds there, okay? So there's that. You can change the change the decay and things like that. So then you also have um, this LFO. It's a single It's a single LFO, but you can send it to some of these uh, predestined areas. So first of all, I mean, the most obvious is pitch. And if you turn off free trigger, you can get, you know, our classic. Right? So you also have control over the volume. So this is, you know, you can you can do some pretty some pretty fast uh, LFOing at, at volume. You can get like a tremolo effect at low speeds, right? Or at fast speeds, you can get kind of a garbly sound. That's kind of fun. Panning. You can also open and close the filter, right? So there's you know there's some features here. Uh, they may not be you know crazy, but. I want to, what I want to talk about is that simpler is this is a building block yet again uh, a building block to a larger sound if that's what you're going for okay but before we get into that let's go ahead and look at some of the other features you might not know about there's also in the the you can also loop the amplitude envelope here so this is you know I'm gonna turn some of these off right now so I've just got this this sound going on right if I decrease the length of this amplitude envelope, I can then do some of those things like I was doing with operator and get repeating amplitude envelopes. Right, <laughs> that's kind of fun. Another thing that I can do is there are some just different. Th these are these are different uh, controls that have to do with just treating the voices. So over here we can get spread. So what it'll do is, is just like an operator, it'll copy the audio and it'll detune one of them, and so it'll make it nice and wide. Let's go ahead and open this back up. Add a little release, and as you can as you can see, it kind of sounds a little bit wider. Another thing that I really like to use a lot, especially when designing drums, is this random panning. So every time I play a note, this will go up in volume. Another thing, and this is where you control velocity, so, you know, if this is at zero, it'll always play the same volume. If you turn it up, it'll play different volumes, depending upon how hard you hit the keys, right? Transpose, you know what that does, detune. Um, and then we have glide here, so you got... So you can get all the way low to all the way super long glide times, right? Okay, so I just added this hard saw. Let's talk about something else. So sometimes this just isn't enough. Like there isn't enough going on here to make an interesting sound. And what we want to do is we want to create sounds with layers. Well, we can use multiple simplers to create a more complex sound, okay? What I want to show you now is how to incorporate simpler into a group of simplers to add like movement and complexity to your sound, okay? So if I right click on the title bar, I can click on group, okay? Now what this is going to do is this is going to introduce what's known as an instrument rack, okay? You'll notice that over here you have a show hide devices button, you have a show hide chain list, and a show hide macro controls. We're going to open this chain list just by clicking on it and turning it yellow. So now you can see that the hard saw is right there. What I can do is I can grab another simpler from my instruments, okay? Now in this simpler I can grab a different audio. Maybe I want to get some more uh, deep low end. So I'll just get a sine waveform. Okay. And I'm going to drop that into this one. So I I'm going to have to turn this uh, dirty signs looping on in order to hear it, right? So that's what that sounds like. And that's this is what this one sounds like. When I play them together, I get... Now I've got somewhat of a more full sound. Okay. Um, now what I can do is I can treat these a little differently and get different sounds. So maybe on the, the sign, I want to have less harmonics, so I'll just listen to the dirty sign right now. Another thing I can do is I can turn it down an octave. So I'm gonna transpose it down 12 steps. 
right? Now I can go back to this hard saw. And maybe what I want to do with this one, let's just make a bass sound. I'm just going to make the voices mono. So in the voices section, both of these are going to be mono. So, and then I'm going to go into the control section and turn on glide, the, the pornamento at 50 for each one of these. So now I get this. Right? And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this area. This is the macro controls, okay? Just like with MIDI mapping, when I turn on MIDI mapping and everything that I can modulate turns blue, if I turn on mapping in the macro controls, what I can do now is have, is have a little bit of fun with going back and forth between these two different sounds, okay? So one thing I can do is map this control. All you gotta do is click on the control you'd like to map and then click on map under this area right here, okay? So now it's gonna show me a range. So from completely turned down up to plus six decibels. Well, I'd like that to just remain at zero. That's kind of intense, all right? Now for the second one, I'd like it to be zero. Zero meaning turned as high as I want it to go and then all the way down to zero. So what this means is now I have a crossfader going between these two sounds. So now we can get these kind of like morphing textures. Something that's fun about that is now that we've got this kind of morphing, this kind of morphing sound going on, we can go even farther. Since these aren't really filtered down that much, what I can do is I can go ahead and add an Ableton auto filter at the end of this, okay? And I can just keep building this sound over. Now what will happen if I drop it within this bar is that that filter is only going to be applied to the track that it's on. Do you see how when I click on hard saw, that auto filter disappears? But when I click on dirty sign, it's back there. What I want to do is affect all of these. So now I get, let's say I have a blend somewhere in the middle of these, right? Now the filter is, is, is affecting both of these. Okay. Now the next thing I can do is I can maybe add an erosion to this to get a little bit of texture back in here. Right? Another thing I can do is I can add a compressor to bring up the gain and kind of control how loud this is, regardless of what I'm playing through it. Right? So now I can kind of... I can edit the controls and they still sound the same. And then finally I can add a reverb to give it some ambience. And so there you, you've got a complex sound using just simplers and grouped into an, an, an instrument rack. Now, let's say you wanted to save this entire thing. If I click on the final device, and then I click on the first device and hold shift, it will select all of these. If I click on all these and all of this is highlighted, I can right click again, hit group, and once again, I have another instrument rack. So now we have instrument rack inception, and I can add some of these controls to the, the macros on this control. So let's say, first of all, I want this crossfader that I made. I can hit map on this one, click on the crossfader, and now I have control over that, right? <laughs> now, when I map an instrument rack to an instrument rack, I actually have to, anything that is in this chain has to be mapped here first before it can be mapped here. But since I've wrapped the effects in here, if I scroll all the way over to my effects, look at that, boom. All those controls are now editable. So, you know, I could do reverb over here, right? I could do filter frequency. Let's find that. Filter frequency right here, right? And then I could do maybe amount of my erosion right here, okay? So now I have this pretty awesome, I can collapse all the devices. And now all I'm looking at is this, right?
So when you open instrument racks in Ableton, you're confused about like, you know, what it is. It just has all these knobs. Well, if you ever want to edit something, just hit this, open it up, and there you go. Okay. So yeah, that's synthesis using simpler and instrument rack. And these are, again, all these things are available in Ableton Lite and in Ableton Intro. So you really have a lot of power and control um, over creating like amazing sounds. Um, I'm going to keep going with simpler um, onto another lesson where we're going to get into uh, more like sound design effects, uh, you know, drum loops and creating drums and sounds like that with it uh, next. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.